I've been tidying up my office for once, putting all of the different cluster hat boards I've made over the last two and a bit years into a box and figured it would probably be a good time to document the changes from the first prototype to the current version 2.3. So here it is. So this is the first prototype from late January 2016. Uh, sadly I made a bit of a gaffe with the uh, connector footprint so the Pi Zeros ended up hanging over the connectors on the controller. I got the next version back with fixed connector footprints towards the end of February 2016. For this version I added the serial connector on the side and a 0.1 inch headers for supplying power. Sadly I can't find a fully populated version of this anymore, even though I did make a handful of them. There might be a couple of version 1.0 cluster hat out there, but I think 1.1 was the first version I really sold. The serial connector was changed from the right angle through hole connector to surface mount. This was mostly due to the problems I had trying to buy connectors with the black spacer after the bend rather than before, as uh, those so with the bend after was too high and caught on the Pi Zeros. The 0 0.1 inch power header was removed as power for the Pi Zeros could be quite easily supplied through the 40 way header. The pull solder jumper on the right hand side on 1.0 was an attempt at a power on state setting to allow the Pi Zeros to be automatically powered on. Unfortunately this didn't keep the power on when the controller Pi was rebooted so it was removed. The bottom entry 2x20-way header was swapped as the connector is quite expensive in comparison to a standard 2x20 header and didn't really do anything as Raspberry Pi hats are designed not to stack and physically stacking on top of the cluster hat doesn't really work either. For 1.2 I initially made a blue test board which saw the right protect jumper for the EEPROM and associated resistor being removed and the alert LED was rotated. Version 1.3 saw a bigger solder jumper and more vias for power and also added pads on the bottom for another surface mount connector for additional power. This was mostly to allow the cluster hat to be used with other small SBC like the Nano Pi Neo which required more power. Then came the bigger jumping changes to version 2. Before I was happy with version 2 I went through around 3 test boards, uh, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2 although the numbering was reset back to 2.0 on the release board. The biggest change was adding the I.O. expander which has 8 ports. 4 of these was initially used to control power for the Pi Zeros and one each for the alert and power LED. I also moved the text for the RX and TX of the serial port to be directly under the pins to make it a bit clearer. The power solder jumper was also changed to have a link on the board so I didn't need to make the solder bridge when assembling the boards. For test 2.1 I added a MOSFET to allow enabling or disabling of the LEDs, excluding the alert LED. This reused the power LED port on the I.O. expander. With test version 2.2 I used another port on the expander to allow the USB hub to be turned on or off. You can also see the trailing copper wire connecting the rotated resistors. This was a test for the power on state by either tying the wire to ground or leaving it floating and then it relies on the pull-up resistors inside the IO expander to turn power on for the Pi Zeros. The release 2.0 board had a few fairly minor changes. The serial console silkscreen text was moved again to make it more readable but keeping it in line with the pins. The last of the I.O. expander ports was also used to allow toggling of the EEPROM right protect and for those who wanted to ensure the EEPROM can't be changed there's also a jumper on the bottom of the board to right protect it in hardware. So now all of the eight I.O. expander ports was used, four for the Pi Zero power, one for the alert LED, one to enable or disable the other LEDs and another to enable or disable the USB hub and the last one to right protect the EEPROM. I also removed the capacitors on the output side of the Pi Zero power. These are only really needed to prevent the voltage going negative when nothing is plugged in, but when nothing's plugged in it doesn't really matter. I then hit on a supply issue of the load switch I've been using since the first prototype to turn the Pi Zero power on or off, so it needed a version 2.1. The load switch was replaced with an N-channel and P-channel MOSFET to keep the logic levels and how the power on state worked the same. 
turning the USB hub on off also needed to be changed so instead of powering it on or off I now held it in a reset state. I also tested a resistor array to reduce the number of components I needed to place on the board. For the final 2.1 board I switched to using more resistor arrays as they seemed to solder ok and moved the MOSFETs closer together so they were easier to place. Then came disaster. I'd been testing version 2.1 cluster hat and Pi 3 using my bench power supply, which could happily cope with the Pi Zeros being turned on quickly through the MOSFETs. But the original and third party power supplies for the Pi I was testing had problems with the inrush current. This caused a dip in the voltage and triggered the under voltage detected warning on the controller Pi. Depending on your power supply, you can see the same issue by just plugging in a Pi Zero without an SD card directly into the USB port on the Raspberry Pi 3, which normally causes the under voltage detected to be shown. Due to this problem, I never sold any of the version 2.1 boards, so if you happen to have one somehow, then please let me know. I reduced the inrush current by adding a high value resistor on the MOSFET gate, which then took advantage of the capacitance of the MOSFET to slow down the switch on time. This became version 2.2. As this happened around the Chinese holiday, I was unable to use my regular supplier to get new boards, so I requested a few quotes from a PCB manufacturer in the UK and Europe. Due to the lack of interest from the UK manufacturer, I ended up going to a supplier in Europe. It cost quite a bit more in comparison to the boards from China, but resellers were running out and I wanted to get them restocked. When the boards arrived, they was matte black. Now, I wasn't expecting that, so if you have one of the early 2.2 boards, then you have the only version in matte black. Uh, version 2.2 lasted quite a while, so there was another batch in the normal gloss black too. After the second batch of 2.2 boards ran out, the back order of the load switches came in, so I switched back to using the load switch for the Pi Zero power, but kept the MOSFET for the USB hub reset, as that worked quite well. No doubt there'll be changes in the future, but at the moment I'm quite happy with the Cluster Hat 2.3 features. So as always, if you have any criticism or suggestions for improvement, please comment on the video.